Hello, it's Len, and today I'm throwing together this super quick video to respond to a flurry of messages that I've been receiving mostly on social media about a certain Nickelback music video that appears to be using some of my home video footage. The messages range from, hey Len, I think Nickelback is using some of your footage, just wanted to let you know, to, holy shit, dude, Nickelback is using your footage, sue those motherfuckers for everything they've got. Yes, Nickelback has used some of my home video footage of myself and my friends in the 1980s in their latest music video. The song is called Those Days, and it's all about being a kid and growing up in the 1980s and 1990s. Just for reference, in case you've never seen my channel or any of my videos and are wondering why Nickelback would even have any interest in them, I post videos from my youth growing up in the 1980s and 1990s. I guess you could say I was vlogging before it was a thing. I'd rent a video camera and record my friends and I getting into mischief or partying or just hanging out doing stuff. We'd also record stuff like lip sync performances or try to make homemade horror movies. So my whole channel totally fits the vibe of this song. I've got it queued up right here on my device and very quickly I'll show you which clips of mine were used in the video. Alright, let's check this out. As we can see right away, there are many items from the 1980s making appearances in this video, setting up a super nostalgic mood. I'd like to point out that the background music you're hearing is not Nickelback, and my apologies, but I won't be playing any of the actual audio of their song in this video. If you know anything about uploading videos to YouTube, you know that having someone else's song in your video can potentially cause you serious headaches, which I've had to deal with many times. So whenever possible, I use copyright-free, YouTube-approved background music like you're hearing now. I'll just be skipping through this really quickly, showing you where they used my footage, but there will be a link to the actual music video in the description below so you can hear the song for yourself. The first clip of mine is just a shot of my stereo in my bedroom in the mid-1980s. Just for fun, I'll give a quick history lesson for the younger people watching this explaining what I was doing right here. So back in the 1980s when you wanted to own a song but didn't want to buy the whole album or cassette, you usually had to record that song off of the radio. Pretty much every tape deck worked the same way. If you wanted to record, you had to push down the record and the play button at the same time. If your stereo was playing a radio station at that moment, it would record whatever was playing on that station straight to your tape. The problem was that you never knew when your song was going to play, so you'd have to push the record and play buttons really fast the very instant you heard your song come on. Even if you were quick, you could still potentially lose precious seconds at the beginning of your song. The way to make this process a little faster and easier was to put your deck into pause mode by first pushing the pause button, then pushing the record and play buttons. Now your deck is on standby, so the instant you hear your song, you just have to release the pause button. This is what I was doing in this video clip. Getting prepared to wait anxiously by my stereo to record my new favorite song, whatever that was. I had tons of mixtapes filled with songs recorded like this that spanned the entire 1980s and 1990s. Here is the next clip of mine, which is my friend Han and I in front of my bathroom mirror in 1987. Han carried a comb in his back pocket to always keep his 80s mullet looking sharp. You can't really tell from this clip, but the camera I was using was a huge pain to carry around. This was a rental camera from our local video store, and you had to carry around this giant box, shown here, that housed the battery and the tape you were recording on, with a wire running out to the actual camera. The recording unit weighed a ton, and there was a super uncomfortable strap that went over your shoulder to pack it around while you were filming. It was honestly a total pain in the ass. The struggle was real in the 1980s. This clip is of me in 1988 in our local record store holding up the then new album Appetite for Destruction from Guns N' Roses. Although it was released in 1987, it didn't actually blow up until around the time that I filmed this video in 1988. The lyrics mention Guns N' Roses at this part in the Nickelback song, which is why they used this clip. Next up is my friend Han again in 1987 looking very much like Eddie Munson from Stranger Things. 
This makes sense since there is another nod to Stranger Things in the music video for San Quentin that Nickelback released prior to this one. Next is my friend Mark hopping a wheelie on a BMX bike and almost wiping out. Then right over here for just a split second is my friend Shane, who today happens to be a huge Nickelback fan, so he was pretty excited about barely being in this. This clip is me riding my BMX down the middle of the street in my hometown in 1987. And yes, I had to ride with that giant thing slung over my shoulder while holding the camera, which wasn't easy. Like I said, it was a rental camera from a local video store, so if I would have crashed and broke it, I would have been in deep trouble. That camera was probably worth like a thousand bucks in 1980s dollars at that time. And finally, here is my friend Han once again, along with my friend Scott, looking for a movie to rent at our local video rental store in 1988. The movie they were looking for that day was Rambo 3, which had just been released in rental stores. Well, those are all the clips of mine that got used in this video. There are some vintage VHS clips in this video of some other young 1980s rocker kids, but those aren't mine. They came from a couple of guys named Eric and Daryl that have a channel somewhat similar to mine where they post home videos they filmed when they were kids in the 1980s and 1990s. They were a little younger than my friends and I though, so where we were getting into trouble and filming stuff like shoplifting, vandalizing, doing drugs, getting hammered, peeing on things, getting yelled at by adults, being chased by cops, and other general immature foolishness that people have come to love or possibly hate from my channel, they were filming stuff like living room lip sync performances, homemade movie productions, early animations, and stuff like that. It's a great channel and I highly suggest you subscribe for some fun nostalgia. There will be a link in the description below. So yes, I did know that Nickelback was going to use this footage in their music video, and yes, I absolutely gave them permission. I can totally read your mind, and I know what your next question's going to be. So, how much did they pay you? Well, we all know that Nickelback is a super huge band with really deep pockets, so you know I squeezed every last dime I possibly could out of them. Now, I did sign a non-disclosure agreement, so legally, I can't tell you specifically what I got, but I can tell you that with the money that I received from Nickelback for these few short clips, I was able to purchase this brand new truck. Thank you, Nickelback. How badass is that? I mean, check it out. Okay, okay, I'm totally messing with you. That's actually my neighbor's truck. What the f*** are you doing? We're totally bros. He's cool like that. For real though, my friends and I all had to sign release forms, and I can say that we were all compensated very fairly. And I would like to make clear, just for the record, that my own personal compensation from this deal did not in any way include prostitutes and or cocaine. Okay, yeah, it totally did. It totally did. Oh my god, you've got to check out these photos. Stop, stop. Showing you photos like that would be super inappropriate for YouTube, so I'm cutting this part out. As for the song, if I'm being real with you, I've always been a sucker for catchy, radio-friendly pop rock, so I can honestly say I really like this. The lyrics and the tune are definitely uplifting, and with the addition of our old home video clips, the whole thing becomes super heartwarming and nostalgic. I'm sure Gen Xers will get all kinds of feels from this. It definitely carries a similar vibe to their 2005 mega-hit Photograph, which, I will reluctantly admit, came on the radio one day in 2006 while I was driving somewhere and totally made me cry. It was a heavy time. Stop judging me. Okay, enough reminiscing. Let's wrap this up. Hope you enjoyed this. Links to the full Nickelback music video is in the description below. Take a look at it. Let me know what you think. If there's a... What the f*** are you doing on my truck? neighbor. Jesus. Gotta go. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for videos from the 80s and 90s.